Well, hi again, everyone, with Bob Lobel. I'm Mike Lynch, and welcome into Unanchored Boston. And here we go. The uh, March Madness, the men's and women's basketball tournaments are underway. And uh, get your brackets out. Good luck to you. I hope uh, somebody wins some big money. And as always, we are brought to you by Cold Springs RV, your destination for all things camping. And where? We're in New Hampshire, of course. And the great George Gray, the big wheel. We call him at George Gray's Lexington Toyota. Robert, how are you? All right, Michael. I don't know what your bracket shows. Have you ever won one of those things? I never I never have. No, me neither. Never. Never have. It's usually like uh, Barbara Lajeunesse, the news director's secretary, or right. somebody else that, that wins. And I, and really... Our producer, Keelan Walsh, she'll probably win. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, um, that's what happens all the time. But it's fun. You know, it, it gets everybody involved. You know, I mean, I know that there are some, some offices... Uh, Ban them. They, they they don't allow them. I think it detracts from the work. They think that it's uh, you know uh, it's a game of chance, but they think it's gambling. Oh yeah, that's ridiculous. The uh, I don't know I don't know what you take. But I, I'm not sure what game would be the best game watching. I think South Carolina and Iowa in the women's bracket would be the best game to watch. I'm going to be interested to see the ratings when we get down. You know, when Iowa, the Iowa women's team plays particular, um, when they're going head to head against, uh, you know, a men's game, I'm going to be interested to see how they, how those ratings are because she is, she's the most entertaining thing I've seen in college basketball. No doubt about it. Everybody knows your name. It's one of those things. Everybody. Like, everybody. Cheers. Everybody knows your name. And as, as, as far as uh, she's a great team player, but she's also a great individual player, too. You might have to go back to Bird and, and Magic in 1979 to find in individuals that you were, you were looking forward to see rather than teams. You know, to tell you the truth, I don't know that there's anybody out there, in, either in men's college basketball or wherever, that I'd rather sit down and do an interview with than Caitlin Clark. I mean, yeah. Period. I mean, no. I just, you know... I'm no. sure there's some people. Other- Who are some of the other people that you've never had, you've never interviewed? Would love to have a chance to interview. I'd love to interview uh, Pete Maravich. Um, I'm trying to think if, if I ever did one. He was with the Celtics, but he was it was at, at the tail end of his career. Um, I mean, that's not necessarily has to be. I guess this is in all all subject areas. Whether you know, oh, you know, so that really opens up the field. It's, People that you just never had a chance to interview that you'd love to have interviewed. Would, if you were still working, would you try to convince your uh, news director to let you uh, go to one of the Iowa women's games before she became a super sensation? Yeah, I think I would. I, and I think they'd probably go for it, you know, because I think you could make the case that this is, this is groundbreaking. I mean, We've had our share of excellent women's basketball players around New England, but they never really got the attention that uh, Caitlin Clark has. But not many people have because she's must-watch TV when she's on. There's no question about it. I uh, it was funny. We were, we were talking about, and I was listening to um, my wife had a group um, exercise class on, and two of the women there um, said that they drove down to. New Jersey to see Caitlin when Iowa played Rutgers because that was the closest geographically that she was coming to New England during this during this season, and and people are coming from all over the place. Every place she goes, she sells out. She bangs it out. It's unbelievable. Yeah, well, she's turning pro, and I'm sure she'll you know be drafted by Indiana, and they. Uh, it's too bad, but you know we'd love to love to have a chance to see her in, in the New England area. That's for sure. There's probably some NBA teams that could use her. <laughs> There's no question that you know wouldn't it be great? To, that would be a, such a great idea, a, it, a great draw. Well, we've got you know we've got women uh, assistant coaches, we've got women um, referees. Why not have a woman playing in the NBA? It's going to happen someday. Yeah. And uh, I just want to, I guess, jump back to the dynasty because that's the thing everybody's been talking about. But now that it's over, now that you've seen the last two episodes and uh, 
Well, how would you well, how would you go with your overall view of the series and, and what you thought of the whole the whole production of and information? Um, first of all, we were very fortunate to have Jeff Benedict, who wrote the book and uh, who wrote the the, uh, the the documentary series, and and we're going to have Matt Hamachek on. He's the he's the director, and he's the one who you hear ask all the questions, uh, particularly. Uh, of interest was when he was trying to press Belichick on Malcolm Butler and Belichick says, yeah, we covered that, Matt. Well, I didn't ask you about that. Silence, the death stare. That was unbelievable. That was a moment. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm sure. And of course there are guys that are uh, not all that happy with it. I mean, McCordy and Rodney Harrison were, uh, wasn't that unbelievable? Huh? Yeah. They were pissed. Well, about the production. Yeah, well, uh, uh, McCourty about says he was, he was duped. You know? Right. All, that's right. And all, all the negative stuff that they said was in and the, and the positive stuff was not in. Right. And I, you know what? I, I get it from a production standpoint. I mean, I think it was really a very entertaining an informative uh, documentary, and I don't know what you could ask more of it. I mean, clearly Belichick came out <clears throat> on the worst end of it, um, but it wasn't that bad. I mean, it, they, they gave him his due because uh, of the way he coached in the last Super Bowl that he was in, you know, changing the defense, which was a brilliant move, and he still had his fastball and everything else, and so they really gave him credit after Kraft blamed him, blamed him for losing the one against the Rams. Uh, he did come back, and I, I'm, maybe that wasn't the one he, that Kraft blamed him for losing. Oh, the uh, Malcolm Butler. Uh, the Malcolm Butler game, yeah, right. Yeah, the Eagles game, yeah. Eagles, and then he came back with the win against the Rams. So that was just – it was fascinating. It's just what it was. Um, so a lot of these guys were taped for hours and question after question. And I think the players thought it was going to be a 10 part celebration of the, all the Super Bowls. And, you know, all after they, you know, told the world to drop dead after Spygate, Deflategate, you name it. And it wasn't. I mean, it was exactly what Jeff Benedict told us it would be. It was going to be that. You know, you weren't – if it was just about Super Bowls and winning and parades, well, it would have limited appeal. Uh, it would stop at the uh, New York-Massachusetts border. Uh, he wanted this to be a universal and, a, and global appeal. And that's why, you know, you had to put in Aaron Hernandez, Spygate, Deflategate, Brady uh, going down with a torn ACL and missing an entire season. And I, what, what, what blew me away, and I, I want to ask Matt Hamachek about this when we have him on in a couple of weeks. He's on vacation, by the way, because he said this thing is took uh, every day of his life for the past three years. But how do you translate it into 50 different languages? I mean, do you just do, do you get right. one person from uh, that speaks 50, di uh, 50 different languages, or oh, do you, you got 50, di 50 different people that, that speak one language? That's way above our, our uh, pay grade or anything we've ever done ourselves, right? Really? <laughs> we had trouble. We had trouble speaking English ourselves. <laughs> you know, I, 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 mean, I was fascinated by it. I mean, I, when it was over, okay, it was over, and you came away with certain opinions of Kraft and Belichick and Brady and. It really was, a, you know, as we talked about it with Benedict, the story of relationships between the three of them. And, uh, but the important part was that people realized that Brady, like I said, Brady was really eloquent when he was came when came back to New England and really didn't realize how, how good he was in speaking when he was in Foxborough at, at Gillette when they, when they brought him back and, he said it really was about the team, and, and it's true. I mean, everybody, not many other people got, you know, credit 
I mean, there was not a whole lot of stuff about Brewski or about or any of the other players that were involved in, in making that team as successful as it was. I mean, a lot of guys, like you said, were interviewed for four hours, but only some of the negative stuff got in. Rodney Harrison was really upset. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was. And um, <clears throat> I just, um, you know, I, I keep seeing snippets of it on um, – TikTok, um, yeah. or Instagram, and I'm saying, oh, yeah, I, I don't remember. That. Yeah, now I remember that thing. I, so I want to go back and watch every episode again and maybe even take notes um, from when we have Matt Hemacek on. But um, it, it, it was it, it's a lot to lot to digest, um, you know, 10, 10, one hour, basically 45 minutes to an hour episodes. And um, I, I was. <clears throat> it was not only was a must see. Excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, must see TV. It was turn everything else off in the house, and you know you had to watch it like you were studying for a final exam. Yeah, yeah. It was. It was, it was a project. There's no question about it, and certainly it was about it was you know pretty close to home. And certainly for us who had a chance to have front row seats for most of those activities, but I hate to even bring up the Red Sox in our short. Well, let's get, we'll get to get to them in one minute, um, but before we let the Pats go. But um, I thought it was interesting that uh, our producer, you know, it, you have, you like Siri on your phone. I like Alexa on my thing. But we, on this show, if we're we want to hear a different opinion, it's ask Keelan. So we can say, Keelan, did you like the dynasty? I understand that you just started last night. Keelan, are you there? Hi, guys. There she is. <laughs> you're Alexa at your service. So uh, what did you think of the dynasty? I loved it. I thought it was – I not that I didn't think I was going to like it. I've just not been the biggest sports fan, but it was so good. I loved it. Loved seeing you guys in it, of course. <laughs> well, that was the best part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it so, was really good. So that that that's what Bob and I are interested in. So it appeals to the non-football fan. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was fun. It's kind of cool seeing people like, even just seeing like Brady. I forget. Remind me, who's the guy that he lived with? Um, oh, Ted Nugent, I think his name was. Yeah, yeah. I think it was just funny, like listening to how they played that video game and they're like oh when tom get mad or when tom got mad he would stomp on the floor until he won i thought that was funny and like the loser had to run the block <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good i, yeah. I don't rem i don't remember that. see that's why i have to go back and watch it again yeah Keelan, was, let me let me tell you one thing Keelan. it it gets it gets less fun as you um, go along not that it's not interesting it gets more interesting but less fun i'll be ready <laughs> i guess be ready. This is great. Keelan's so much better than Alexa and, and Siri. Isn't he? <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. All right, Keelan. Thank you. We'll, if we need you, we need you. We'll call you back. All right. All right. I'm all yours. Okay. All right. Bye. 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 Girl. See, it's a nice touch to the show. We got the magic. Nice. We need an answer. There it is, right there. She's not really a hardcore sports fan, but she loved loved the dynasty. So they they've hit a home run. They, they, they've done it, uh, accomplished what they set out to accomplish. Agreed. Totally right. agreed. You want, you want to go to the, uh, you know what? Well, I don't no. want to go to the Red Sox, but I really feel like we have to because, you know, Major League Baseball has started, uh, albeit uh, in South Korea, and uh, Mookie Betts has already hit a home run. So, you know, why can't we get players like that? <laughs> but there's, uh, when you put together the Dodgers and the, Padres lineup and you see how many former Red Sox players are involved. It's disgusting with nothing else. And I only say one thing. They have their opening day plan to bring back the 2004 team. Now we found out that Schilling is not coming back. Correct. But, uh, that is uh, that's good news. I could care less about Kurt Schilling coming back. And uh, he, uh, of course, uh, revealed that Tim Wakefield had, you know, 
uh, life threatening cancer and uh, be, and be, before it was, you know, out publicly and he Schilling has basically become a pariah to the rest of that team. And so for, for whatever reason, he's not coming back. It's not a bad thing, but they put all that together along with a tribute to Tim and Stacy Wakefield on opening day, which is a lot. I mean, I think they could have done the Wakefield stuff alone on opening day and yeah. players at some other point. I mean, I just think it's a lot. It's awful. You know, it's a lot on opening day to bring all those people together. It's certainly because they're going to come back from a West Coast road trip and, you know, probably be in trouble immediately. Um, this is true, but I think the reason, well, it's a smart move by the Red Sox because there really is nothing to, other than it, it's the home opener, there's nothing to celebrate. You know, there's no great season, so they got to honor the – I think they, they could honor the 2004 team on another night. But That's what I mean. That's all yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. I'm not – I think the Wakefield stuff is really important and, and you know, it's right on point. But to do the – to do it all together, uh, you know, whatever. They, they obviously are tone deaf, basically, with uh, how – the things that they do resonate with the fans. I'm trying to read. I, I, I had a quote up here on. Um, uh, from Chilling. And um, now I can't find it on my phone. But uh, he took a shot at Shaughnessy in his uh, statement. He said, you know, I'm just not going to come up here um, because I, I don't feel like having the. Uh, CHB, curly haired boy, and in parentheses it says Dan Shaughnessy writing about it. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm not coming, it'll be a distraction. He says, I, I forever will uh, regret uh, doing what I did, but it's too late right now. And I, I don't, I think it's, it's, it, it's insincere. I don't think it's genuine. I think we, we've all had enough of Chris Schilling. He, uh, he did his part on the field. There's no question about that. I yeah. Mean, that was, and he did his part on that 2004 uh, team, bloody sock and all. But I'm just saying that uh, I agree with you. You know, I think mean, it's nice to see Shaughnessy back. This is the first column that he's written. And uh, it, I know, you know, it is, it's great to see him back. And we're going to have him on next week to talk about a few things, including the dynasty, when I really was looking forward to getting his take on the dynasty. Yeah, he'll be great on the dynasty. Um, uh, let me, let me uh, uh, again, going back to the dynasty, if you thought the intent was to elevate Robert Kraft's status and to use it as something to enhance his um, election to Canton, Ohio, did they succeed in that or did it backfire? Uh, personally, I think that they did not advance this cause uh, because I think other, the uh, other owners are obviously all going to watch it. And uh, any opinions they had about Robert are, one way or the other are probably going to be reinforced. I mean, he did take, uh, he did come off in the dynasty with an enormous amount of credit uh, and very little a damage and I and I guess justifiably so because they were the signature sponsors of, of the program so I guess you couldn't have expected anything else but one of the things that jumped out on me Mike was in uh, the last two episodes when Kraft was talking about his coach he was a pain in the tush and uh, also said after he blamed him for the loss by benching Malcolm Butner, Butler and going against all his team first, uh, you know, philosophies yeah. that he, you know, he blamed Belichick for the loss and uh, basically said that uh, uh, it's personal. He, I'm going to keep my eye on him. Yeah. Of all, you know, but that was, that to me, 
jumped out and said, what are you kidding? It's not a child. You're like a child. I'm going to keep, well, I'm going to keep my eye on him. And uh, <laughs> anyway, I just, that, that was my take on, I don't think he helped himself at all. No. Uh, he had no control over Bill Belichick while Bill Belichick was successful. No zero control over him. And he knew he couldn't have any control over him. He knew he ruined the product. But Kraft waited and finally got his moment where he held the hammer and he finally got to tell the coach what to do. No, we're going to do it this way. You're going to listen to me. And then vamos, he's gone. And I don't think with Patriot fans, I don't think they like the fact that it was kind of a hatchet job on their head coach. You know, they in Bill we trust. And Bill Bill brought six championships, nine Super Bowl appearances to this uh, to this region right here. And you know, Patriot fans aren't stupid. And I think Robert and Jonathan think Patriots fans are very naive and they're all gonna drink the Kool-Aid. Well, they, they don't drink the Kool-Aid. They're smart fans. You know, we always have this thing. Red Sox fans are, are very educated uh, baseball-wise. Well, so are, so are the Patriot fans. And I don't think I, – I think they saw right through it. I think they saw that it was going to be a pro-craft production. And they were – I think they were upset at how their head coach was treated. Yeah, I, I agree. Despite the fact that he uh, has performed – poorly record wise since Brady left. Uh, and of course it jumps out that that immediately is Brady's responsibility that they, they did so well, but the, the fans have kind of rallied around Belichick after watching the dynasty and oh. saying, yeah, you know what? Kraft, Kraft didn't do anything. Uh, it was Belichick that won those six, Super Bowls, blah blah blah. So, yeah, I think I think your point is is well taken. Uh, let me just do the campers. Go ahead. Go ahead. Can I'll, I do I'll, this? Yeah. That's <clears throat> practicing all week. Okay. Let me hear you did. Just pointing out campers, just seeing them down coming down the road and saying, "There's a pop up," or "There's a travel trailer," "There's a fifth wheeler," and you see them all down here. Yeah, I bet you do. He'll, he'll yeah. Camper, so get ready for 2024 now with the new RV. It is time. The time has come. Time to pull the trigger. Camper's uh, Cold Springs RV has the latest in pop-ups. You'll notice some travel trailers, fifth wheelers, and motorhomes. And when you need an RV or service on your present RV, go to Cold Springs RV in Ware, New Hampshire, Where? which is just west of Gosstown and north of Haverhill, and, of course, the rest of Appalachia. So uh, go check out the all-new Winnebago Access Travel Trailers now on their lot. Jump into Winnebago and head south. That's it, baby. Head south. If you're not happy with the weather, go find some weather you can enjoy, and you can do it in the Winnebago. And don't forget them, forget to tell them you heard it on Lobel and Lynch and the podcast that they have, which is one of the best in the country, according to the released <laughs> last ratings. Learn more at ColdSpringsRV.com. Okay, so much for that, Mike. What's right, the question so, of the day? So I have the question for you, Bob Lobel. Um, you're gonna, you're gonna be, uh, you, you actually get a chance to, to ride in the Lobby Cruiser once. Um, yeah, Cold good. Springs RV is yes. available. It's, well, it's, it, it's in the developmental stages right now, and we're in, it's, it's under a, a big shroud, so no one no one knows what's going on under there. Right. It's like a but, super thing, but when right. you make the maiden voyage, we're going to let you drive cross country, but you have to pick somebody, one of the characters in the dynasty, all ten episodes, and there are a lot of different people that were on there. You got Alex Guerrero, you got Tom Brady's father, then our old players. Who would you like to ride shotgun with in the Cold Springs RV, ride cross country with Bob LaBelle? <clears throat> well, here's the deal. I think that um, since you mentioned Alex Guerrero, and I'm not going to pick him by any stretch of the imagination, really part of the problems the Patriots had started with him. I mean, that really kind of started 
the whole breakup between Brady and Belichick, which was an interesting part of the of the whole series. So now that you're asking me that, uh, I'm trying to think who would I possibly think. Uh, you know, I, I, I guess I'd take Belichick. I know that sounds really weird. Oh. And that, you know, well, I mean, uh, you're you're asking yourself, Bob, to ride for a really miserable three thousand miles if you're going to pick Belichick. But I think it's just the opposite. I think uh, what you see is what you get, and I think he would do his part. At least he could help in the driving. So I, I would just say that. <laughs> well, other than Parcells, I don't know. You know what? Now that I think about it, I'm trying to remember that. I guess I'd, I guess I'd still, I'd take either one of them, right? Can I just have a choice between Parcells and Belichick and maybe yeah, switch yeah. off in St. Louis and get yeah. take one or the other? Yeah, drop, drop one of them off at the Gateway Arch. St. Yeah, that's, Louis. all right, I'll do that. And I'll, then have somebody else hop in for the rest of the ride. I'll take, I'll drop, I'll take Belichick and then drop him off in St. Louis and take Parcells the rest of the way. Okay, all right. All right, That that's fair enough. All right. Can you answer the question? Yeah, you did. You did, did a very good job. What, uh, what about you? Ask. What about you? Um, well, I asked the questions, so I, I, know, I don't. I, know. I don't I know that, Mike. I don't want to usurp your role here. But, but, I but since you asked, yes, um, thank you. And I thought he was as chatty as he has ever been. Many people you can hear the players say, "We don't know who this guy is or what he does." Ernie Adams mm -hmm. would be fascinating. Um, He's uh, he's been a big Belichick disciple, Steve Belichick, that is, before he even met Bill at Philip Sandover in September of 1971. Um, 1970, I should say. And I think that he is eager. He knows every secret the Patriots have. Every one of them. He, he, he knows. Everyone. He knows about Spygate, he knows about the flake gate, he knows about tapes that were smashed and destroyed, he knows everything. Why and don't I, you think? Why do you think he didn't let Bill know that he was being isolated and, and losing the team? Ernie, yeah, I think he was gone by then, wasn't he? Uh, oh, 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 were they still winning? You mean like, uh, well, you know, yeah, when he was when he basically has lost the team. You know, when he basically, you know, players hated him. Uh, players, there was no joy. Gronkowski, those guys, there was just no joy in the last couple of Super Bowls. Yeah, maybe, maybe they, um, maybe Bill, like all great leaders, uh, when they're when they're losing their, there's a mutiny. They they just don't want to hear it and they don't want to believe it. And said it's always worked in the past. You know, my way has always worked. They will follow me. I am their leader. I know the right way. And I think that's what happened. And nobody could tell him. And, you know, I, I was surprised that Ernie actually retired. I thought that he would leave when Belichick left. Because Ernie really, really, really loved that job. Yeah, I, that's, a fair, that's a fair pick. I can understand why you'd say it. You choose him. I just thought when he was as close to Belichick and was kind of like the, the secret guy walking around that nobody knew what he did, he would have been able to figure out that Belichick was losing the team and players were really, you know, not that, all that happy to be there and go through all that, what they had to go through. Because they said it was not fun. And it was, the last few years, Amendola was really remarkable. You think he came out more than stronger than anybody else in that whole thing. Amendola was amazing. We worked for Bill. We we played for Tom. And that said it all, right? It did. Worked for it Bill. Did. You know, it really made... Uh, we know it was a crap production. This could have gone anyway. I think they had more material than you could possibly imagine. And they could have made it into anything about anybody, any one of those those three guys, and it came out the way it came out. But even Brady came out better than Brady ever was, and he was always 
at the end, the best ever. And it made him even better than the best ever uh, for, for some reason. He, he was, it was like he was driving the bus. Yeah. Or, yep. the, or the fifth wheel or whatever <laughs> the case may be. <laughs> or the Cold Spring RV. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's pretty, well, well, Tom does, Tom does everything pretty well. And I, I trace every, every, every bit of on the field success. Well, not every bit, but personality wise, back to his mom and his dad. Yeah. I mean, he is who he is because of Galen and Tom Brady senior. Yeah. And, and I don't doubt that at all. There's no question about it. I mean, you know, I, fact that his sisters probably had a lot to do with his upbringing. Absolutely. He, absolutely. Three uh, older sisters. They probably dressed him up, uh, you know, in, 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 in women's clothes like a doll. Really? That's an interesting one. <laughs> I hadn't thought about that. He told right. me that one time. He said, oh, yeah, they used to always try to dress me up as a, as, as a, you know, as a doll and, you know, try to curl my hair. And I always try to run away from him. And, uh, but I think that, you know, Tom, the worst word you want to hear from your parents is, I'm disappointed in you. I mean, that that, that, that crushes everybody when they hear that from the parents, right? Yes. And so... Um, from I, personal knowledge, I'd say yes. <laughs> so so I, I know that, that Tom still feels that way, that, you know, if his um, mother called him up and said, Tom, I was really disappointed in what you had to say after the game about your offensive line, you know better than that. That would kill Tom, kill him. And he'd never do it again. So. Well, you're right about that. I mean, he was, the, he was very fortunate to have, have so many uh, quality people around him. And I think at one point he thought that Belichick was an extension of that. Yeah. And, and just kind of, you know, it all kind of went sour. And I blame Belichick for that because I think Belichick was the one that was worried about losing power and was worried about, was more jealous of Tom's, uh, whatever, success. And when I, I think at some point Belichick never felt that he got the right credit or as much credit as, as he should have gotten. Yeah. Well, when, you, when you're driving cross country with him, um, I'll talk to him about it. I, I hope you have a you know complete report um, on my desk um, seventy two <laughs> hours after you arrive back. At <laughs> yes, sir. I'll take care of it. <laughs> so, what else is on your mind today besides opening day, the Red Sox, and opening day, of the Red Sox? How many games? Up? Every ten, they have a ten game with West Coast trip before they come home for opening day. What do you think their record will be? What where will they be after the first ten games of the season when they come back home to Fenway Park? It may not be pretty at all. I mean, they may they may face a very hostile crowd. Well, um, I got to look. I don't have the schedule in front of me, but uh, is Oakland on that schedule? Well, yeah, they play. They start in Seattle, and they must Oakland must be on the schedule. Yeah, I don't I don't know how many they have in Oakland, but I mean, I, I would think they would be able to beat beat Oakland. Um, Do you know who their starting lineup is going to be? No, I know the pitcher, Bello. That's it. I'm sorry, that was a loaded question. <laughs> that's the only one I can name. I'm yeah. serious. Yeah, I know. I it's a loaded question, right? Who's their starting catcher? Don't know. I don't know. Jason Veritek? <laughs> Bob <laughs> Montgomery? <laughs> <laughs> Fisk? Yeah, they should. They would hope, right? When are we gonna get Fisk on the show? You know, I guess I can make that call. Yeah. That would be pretty good. I'll work, I'll work on it. All right. And it would be nice. Uh, Charles Steinberg will not be involved in the opening day production, right? I, I don't think so. I think Sarah's doing it now. She's in charge of all those things. Is that right? She was a disciple of Charles, though. So, you know, yeah. A lot of Charles' style will be on there. They, Red, I'll tell you what, Red Sox do um, celebrations as well as anybody, I would say. Uh, yeah, they they did. They've done a lot of great opening days, and um, I do agree that, that that was a strength of their – but that's not 
what the fans paid for. Well, you know what this reminds me of, Bob? I, I remember, uh, I think you were not were in the same meeting. Um, we met with Todd Rosenzweig of the Celtics when they were really down, you know, I mean, it hit their low point with ML running the team, and there was just no interest at all. And they brought back um, all these Celtics legends for a halftime chat on the court. You remember that? Yes, they do. And um, so we, we would all sort of rotate uh, and have a player for a night and then, you know, be on the court. And it was sort of to draw the attention away from the pathetic product that was on the court into a celebration of John Havlicek, Jojo White, uh, you name it. And this is what the Red Sox, right out of the shoot. I mean, it's opening day. Opening day is open. It can stand alone by itself because all sins are forgiven on opening day. Everybody, well, I should say that they're not 0 and 0 because they could be one and nine. But 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 home opener is a, it stands alone. And they could have gone another night with this with this 04 celebration. And and it won't be the last one during the course of the season. I know that there'll be be many and many of those nights. And it's to you know camouflage. Well, go, I guess they go full throttle on the productions <laughs> around the baseball team. Maybe that's what he meant. That's what we're going full throttle on our <laughs> that that should be our theme for this year. Full, full throttle, right? Full throttle. Why don't we change the name of the podcast to Full Throttle? Full Throttle. <laughs> I think that's good. Think that's a good idea? I think that's a great idea. <laughs> Not just because it was mine. I just think it was a great idea. So you're doing you're doing sports right now on WBZ Channel Four. How many times are you going to use the phrase full? Throttle. You know what? Many times. I'm gonna bet more than you could possibly imagine. <laughs> more than why can't we get players like that? <laughs> Full throttle. You know what? There, there's so many things I would have done, and you may feel the same way. So many things we would have done. Uh in turn if we were still there. Uh, about so many of these things. I don't, I don't, these, I'm not blaming anybody or pointing any fingers, but there's a lot of wasted opportunities for some comedic relief. Well, that wouldn't be wasted on us. <laughs> we would find a way. There's no question about it. Uh, by the way, we should mention the NCAAs are going to be at the Boston Garden. Ooh. Uh, you know, the TV garden, rather. I tell you what, that that is one of the great shows of all time. When they uh, and and this uh, this time it's it's the uh, I think it was the same as last time. It's the East Regional Finals. Yeah. So you know, one of your Final Four teams is going to come from uh, those two games played at the Boston Garden, March twenty eighth and and March thirtieth. There'll be a lot of be uh, UConn, although you never know who's going to be a get get through. But UConn is in that bracket. Yep. All right. So uh, should we tell everybody who our final four is? Uh, yeah, I got to figure it out. I got to remember what it is. What... Okay. Go I'm ahead. Gonna, I'm going to go in the east. It's going to be um, Houston. The Midwest is going to be Kansas. The east is going to be Yukon and the West is going to be Purdue. I'm gonna go with Baylor. That's good. No, no, that's that's good. I like that. Who am I to disagree with any of those? You might as well put a blindfold on me and give me a handful of dogs. Well, I feel the same way. You know, who's who am I to disagree with any of those? I do like Yukon and I probably would have picked Purdue or Or whatever, but that's all right. UConn has a hell of a following, you know. I mean, yeah, no kidding. It's unbelievable. They're, you know, this there stuff that's usually reserved for the, the West or, or the Midwest or the yeah. Southwest or the Southeast conferences is up here in Stores, Connecticut. 
They're unbelievable, both men and the women. <laughs> You know, it all started with Jim Calhoun. I mean, I sure, you just read my mind. Yeah, they were very Calhoun popular. Calhoun is the guy that uh, yeah, that started it all. You know, when when uh, Jim Calhoun went to uh, Braintree High School, played for the uh, uh, the Wamps, as they call them. Uh, where did he go? AIC or Assumption? I think. Um, I think that's where he went. But anyway, he came out of uh, college and he got the head job at Dedham High School who was in the Bay State League and they were rivals with with Braintree. Um my dad was uh, in his, his second first I think his second year they went 21 they were undefeated 21 and all. And so my dad used to go scout the teams that we could potentially play in the Class B state tournament. And he came back after seeing Dedham one time. He said, they said, boys, he said, I just scouted Dedham last night. They are as well coached as any team. If we want, we wind up playing them in the tournament, we're in for the fight of our lives. Because, because he recognized this coach um, who was spectacular, who went to Northeastern and was spectacular yeah. and who went to UConn. And we were all sad to see him leave. We, we all kind of thought that maybe, you know, the, ne the next BC coach that left, Calhoun would be it. But BC wanted nothing to do with any anybody over at Northeastern. <laughs> Sounds like a Harvard attitude. <laughs> I mean, but, but you're right. I mean, it was um, – and he was the most unassuming guy. He was just such a terrific guy. Awesome. Awesome. And remember the uh, – there, there was a press conference uh, – that uh, somebody brought up that he made more money than the um, president of the University of Connecticut. And w would you consider uh, giving back part of your salary? <laughs> and the guy was in mid, would you consider, it was in mid sentence, he didn't finish the question. And Calhoun's going, not one dime, not one dime. Do you hear me? Not one dime. You know what I do? I put fannies in the seats. And you know what? Every one of those finnies represents tickets, money, and money that goes to the university that builds buildings. That put that that he was able to hand out scholarships. He had a great retort for everybody, and he would take people on in his press conferences like nobody else. He wouldn't let let like a question just slide and go next question. He says, "What? what you want me to stand here? You want me to stand here and argue with you? I, I, I give you the, I'll give you the facts. I give you the fact of facts." You know, I thought he and Bob Ryan. Words, words per minute. How many? <laughs> remember the old typing class? How many words per minute? Yeah, of course. The, the spoken word. Who would win the contest? Juan Ryan or Jim Calhoun in words per minute? He used to uh, he used to jog around the Esplanade, and I'd run into him every time. We'd go be going one way, I'd be going the other way, and I'd see him pretty much by the hat shell every day. You know once or twice a week and it just, you know, just wave, talk, Hey Jim, hi Bob, how you doing? And, uh, you know, I, I loved it when he was here and I, I really enjoyed watching him at UConn. He, he and he, you're right, my boy, when he started that program on its way and it translates to Gino Oriama and everything else that went on with UConn, they have, they really launched themselves into the, forefront of, of college basketball and follow and the following. Absolutely. You know, and, and uh, you know, some schools are destinations, some schools you want to avoid, you know, pe people flock to Duke, they flock to North Carolina, they flock to UCLA and UConn's one of those teams. It, it's a destination. Well, you mentioned Kent State. I thought you were going to throw that in. We are Kent State. We are Kent State. The flashes. Are they in the tournament, by the way? No, and now why would you say that? That was a you, you no, no, that. that was cruel and mean and very unnecessary. No, Akron <laughs> beat Akron beat him three times this year, and Akron's in the tournament. So, but and, and Akron is a good nickname too. Are they, are they the the zeros or something? The zips. The zips. Yeah. Akron zips. Okay. Yeah, I spent some... golden flashes. The Akron zips. I spent uh, two nights in Akron once. The hotel looked like a 
like a silo, like uh, there would be green. No, let's just stop it because it did. no, it did. You no, know, they're the rubber capital of the world. They had Firestone. They had Goodyear. They had Goodrich. They they made all the tires in Akron, Ohio. In fact, Barberton, which is a suburb of Akron, is the hometown of LeBron James and Mike Vrabel's from Akron. So there, you don't need to have any more. You know, I don't need to defend Akron. I, I walked around. They have a minor league baseball team there, a nice ballpark downtown. But there's, there's Akron, there's the Cleveland Airport, then there's nothing, then there's Akron, then there's nothing, then there's Canton, Ohio. Is that there's about some of Canton Airport. What's that? Akron Canton Airport. Oh, Akron Canton. It's a slash now? Well, it always was, actually, Akron Canton Airport. But no, Barbara, where's LeBron James is from here? I'm just saying, it's just a stone's throw from Kent State. You know, um, when you return your rental car, um, if someone's not on it, says uh, attendant. You no, know, it's not. A, it's not true. That's not. It is, it is true. You, you return the rental car, and says um, attendant not on duty. It's the honor system. Just put your key in the in the little. Well, who the hell would ever fly into Akron Canton in the first place? Me. Why? Because you'd save some money. No, because it was closer to Canton. We were going to cover uh, Andre Tippett's induction to the Hall of Fame. Oh, okay. So, yeah, but, that's true. I, that's where you go, Akron, Canton. Okay. But I forgot. Um, I, I, let, I, I, I put the rental car and I, I threw my, the honor system. I threw my keys threw down this, in, into this little box. And then I said, oh, shoot, I forgot my, uh, I don't know, some jackets in the trunk of the car. Aha, uh -huh, good. I, I reached back and got the keys, went out, oh. got it, and went back, honor system. You know what? What do you think if that if that honor system was in uh, Boston or New York? I mean, how many cars would never be seen again? That that that's Americana uh, right there. Can is it Canton, Akron, or Akron, Canton? Akron, Canton. Okay. Now, would you fly in there when you went home? home? Pardon me. When you went home, would you fly into there? Uh, no, I would go fly into Cleveland. Okay, so you you're you're up north, right? Well, I was south of Akron, Canton, but I would fly into Cleveland because I'm not stupid. I would fly to you know a big airport that's got people on duty to take my rental car instead of dropping them in boxes. But I'm Hop just saying, Hop Hop like Hopkins, Akron, Hopkins County Airport. Yeah, Johns Hopkins County Airport. Or Hopkins County Airport, right? Is that the same Johns Hopkins? That's the no, it's uh, not Johns Hopkins. This was just the Hopkins County Airport. Okay. My mistake. Okay, Hopkins County Airport. My yeah, mistake. I, yeah, very nice. I like it there. Yeah, it's a nice airport, and you know, as Chet Curtis once said, that it's not the end of the world, but you can certainly see it from there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. We're giving you too much crap about about Ohio. I don't mind. I can take it. You know, I can believe me. Don't start. I mean, I've, I not have railed on Harvard. Have I, have, have I brought no. up Harvard today? No, Yale, Yale is in the tournament, but Harvard's not. So how's that? I have not railed on, on the crimson. <laughs> All right. I got to do a spot for uh, the big wheel. George. Yeah, you do. All right. Try not to screw it up. I will not. My, my lines aren't as long as yours, so they, they must have greater confidence in you than they do in me. I don't think that's necessarily true, but if that's what you say, go ahead and live with it. Well, if you're thinking about a new vehicle, go where Lobie and Lynchy go, and we don't go anyplace else. Go see our friend George Gray at George Gray's Lexington Toyota. We've been customers for years because we know George Gray will treat you right. They're a family-owned and operated dealership that reach, we trust, and you oh, you screwed up. You just screwed up. I did. I did. The family over dealership that we trust and you can trust as well. Go see the big wheel himself. And he is the biggest of wheels. He is not, and we're not talking about physically. He's just a, he's a big deal and he's the big wheel. Go see the great George Good Gray. George Gray's Lexington Toyota 409 Mass Ave in Lexington. Okay. You know, that was a good comeback. That was good. Speaking of when I used to, uh, I dropped my car off for an oil change at George Gray, and I'd I'd go for a run. They have uh, an old railroad bed behind the, uh, yep, and the dealership, and I would I would run there in my running days. But 
which are behind me, I think. Um, did, you, did you ever think about running the marathon? Everybody that's run a Boston Marathon, raise your hand here. No. no, nobody in this camp right here. I, 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 have you run five times? Why five? Just because I held up five fingers? Yeah. No, I, I just, why would that? I said, raise your hand. My hand has five fingers, and I rose my, raised my hand. I'll say, well, good. You know, I, I, I'm I going to salute you, Bob, because I think that's a great accomplishment. If they shorten it by, by 24 um, miles, I'm in. Um, because I have no uh, – I've run a, 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 a bunch of uh, 5Ks in my life, but that I, I have no interest in running one step further. Not one – I understand. Two, I say, I understand. Not, it was one, a- not one step. Not one step further. It was a commitment. I I would say that it just it was the same day finish, same day finish. I got an idea. Why don't we try to get Jim Calhoun on the podcast? I think it'd be great. That'd be awesome. Would we get a chance to talk? You know, it'd probably be a gift if we didn't. We, you know, that'll be the next full throttle episode. I I brought. They played in Worcester against somebody, and. Um, I brought my dad. My dad was, is a big, big fan of Jim Calhoun. We sat, the press table uh, was right behind the Yukon bench. And my father just kept going like this and says, he spends the entire game with his back to the floor talking to the guys on the bench about how lousy the guys on the floor are doing. <laughs> you know, and they were playing somebody like Vermont or somebody who they should be crushing. And, you know, halftime, it's a one-point game. And then all of a sudden, five minutes gone in the second half, and it's a tie game. And then he turns to the team. He says, it gets him a timeout. And he says, when the F, you got to figure out that we're in an effing ball game. We got a game going on here. And we're tied with this team with 15 minutes to go. You know, and he just reamed them. And all of a sudden, whoop, they just took off from there. And uh, But he's he was a he, he was a classic. Classic. I think he lives. I think he's down here in Hilton Head somewhere. Why don't you uh, make it uh, your your uh, mission? The next well, couple of days. Yeah, that it really wasn't on my schedule, but I'll try to fit it in. Are, are you a South Carolina women's basketball fan now? Since you have been down there so long. Uh, well, that's an interesting. I never really made that connection. Actually, the fact that I'm in South Carolina. I don't say I'm in South Carolina, I'm just Hilton Head, but it is. <laughs> it just seems to be a big difference. Yeah, you know. Now, the answer to your question is no. I have I mean, not. I, I don't know. remember what the question is right now. The question was, was I a South Carolina basketball fan? Oh, yeah, right. Okay. Right. He, was only, he only asked me that two, 20 seconds ago. <laughs> I don't know. It's that time of life, Bob. We're going you... full throttle. We go, we're going full, full throttle. throttle. We're going full throttle. I just think Keelan. I just think Keelan did today. She do all right. Yeah, Keelan did fine. Ask her if she likes full throttle, and she can she get her name changed without too many problems. Keelan, can we change the name of the show to a full throttle uh, that Tom Werner has been using? Uh, speaking about the Red Sox this year, can we do that, Keelan? I'm not going to make any promises at this time. <laughs> <laughs> no How promises. difficult would it be? I don't know why you don't. You're not like in the. It only be a fifth name change. <laughs> I don't know. Unanchored kind of sticks though. Full like throttle. That? No, full throttle has a certain magic to it. <laughs> if you insist. <laughs> well, I, I <laughs> just want you to think about it. All right, food for thought. Full okay. throttle. All right. Okay, NCAA basketball tournament on the 28th to the 30th. That's what. You guys, Mike, want, uh, good Bye. job. You know, thanks. thanks. <laughs> good job, Michael. All right, uh, good show. Dan Shaughnessy will join us next week. Uh, uh, we'll we'll be posting it on our uh, our website. Yeah, also, welcome back, uh, Dan. Had a great column on uh, Schilling, and it's going to have a great column coming up uh, Friday on the Dynasty. Yeah. Remember, that- curly haired boyfriend was Carl Everett when he was talking to Gordon Eads. Yes. He said, Gordon, eat you and your curly-haired boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, on that note, we will say goodbye to everybody. And make sure you follow us on unanchoredboston.com. Or soon to be full throttle.